and better. No matter the size of your dream, tomorrow's success belongs to those who keep today's records clean. File your returns today. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Kapo, you seem to be in a hurry. Where are you going to? I'm going to pay URA a visit. Why would anyone visit URA? Of all places? To know more about the Kakasa Business Solutions, namely digital tracking solution, the voluntary disclosure program and electronic fiscal receipting, and invoicing solution which have turned my business around. You know I need to be on top of my game to protect my empire. <laughs> yeah, if you know, you know. I too need to know what Kapo knows. Kakasa, be sure you are in charge of your business. Uganda Revenue Authority, developing Uganda together. Why, Tabu? Tuna Marilisa. And what are you doing throwing papers all over the place? I'm looking for an invoice for a sound system and cables that I received yesterday, but I can't find it. You know there is a way of keeping all this in one place and available to you as and when you need it. I really wish there was one, because the way these invoices grow legs and disappear, I believe this is what you're looking for. Eh, eh? Now how did it get there? Tabo! Do you know that with Efris, you can stay on track of all your business transactions and improve on your record keeping? How so? Katituliku computer with Efris. I just search using the fiscal document number and I retrieve the records I'm looking for. Bookkeeping becomes simple after that. Ah, Kapo, also me. I began using URS Kakasa solutions and now I'm in charge of my business. And you can as well. Kakasa, be sure. You are in charge of your business. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Uganda Revenue Authority reminds all taxpayers to file their monthly returns and make all outstanding payments by the 15th of every month. Please comply to avoid penalties and interest associated with failure to file returns and payment of these taxes. For further clarifications, call us on our toll-free line 0800-117-000 or email us on services at ura.go.ug. Please ignore this message if you have already complied. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. In chess, the small one can become the big one. It's the same here. And here too. Watch every move. Record every number so you can plan better. No matter the size of your dream, tomorrow's success belongs to those who keep today's records clean.
file your returns today. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Good morning, viewers. Welcome to the URA Live Tax uh, Lounge uh, Q&A session that's going to be um, talking, addressing the issue of ADR and how everybody wins with ADR. I'll be your host today. I'm Basima Tracy from the legal department of URA. I'm joined by my seasoned colleagues. They're actually seasoned lawyers, and they'll introduce themselves. So starting with you, the gentleman on my right, kindly introduce yourself. Thank you, Tracy, for those introductory remarks. Uh, good morning, viewers. My name is Tony Kalunji, and I work in the Legal Services and Border Affairs Department of URA. It's a pleasure to be here, and we look forward to interacting with you. Thank you, viewers. Uh, my name is Krista Namtebi. I'm also from the Legal Services Department, and I'm glad to be here. I'm looking forward to a very interactive session with you, our dear taxpayers. Um, so this session is really going to be interactive. We're looking to respond to your questions that you're going to note in the chat section. So um, we're going to talk about ADR, like I had said. ADR is Alternative Dispute Resolution. Our panelists are going to break down to us what this means, what are the forms, how do you commence ADR, and many other things. But before my panelists can start to break down and delve into the topic of ADR, I would like to share with you this simple illustration. What do you see? Some people will tell you this is an M. Other people will tell you this is a W. And other people will tell you this is a 3. It looks like a 3. So you see there is potential for conflict in everything. That is why it is important to resolve conflict outside of the courtrooms. And I'll take this opportunity to ask Mr. Tony Kalunji to just explain to us what is ADR, what is ADR in full actually. Mm -hmm. You could start by telling our viewers what that is. Yeah, well, thank you, Tracy. Well, ADR, the acronym in full is Alternative Dispute Resolution. So whenever you hear ADR, I just know it's Alternative Dispute Resolution. Okay. So what does Alternative Dispute Resolution mean? Yeah, yeah. thank you for that. Uh, the main or the converse way of resolving disputes is by way of going to court and you litigate. So anything whereby you resolve a dispute formally but you don't go to court or you don't go through litigation is what is known as alternative dispute resolution or ADR. And it's possible. You can resolve a dispute you have without fighting it out in court, without a judge making a specific ruling and you can reach a point where both of you win. So that is what ADR is. You resolve issues outside court. Uh, Krista, I know that there may be some people who think that URA and the legal department is only interested in litigating matters. So can you just share with us your experience? Is this something that URA does? Do we practice ADR? Well, actually, we practice ADR a lot. And we've had several cases that have been uh, determined at the ADR stage. And basically, the best thing about ADR, like uh, it's written up there, everybody wins. URA wins. The courts are going to win. And also the taxpayers win. Yes. OK. So Krista, why would someone choose <clears throat> to pursue ADR instead of going through the court process? Why um, would a taxpayer or why would URA say, you know, we're not going to go through with a full-blown trial, let's pursue ADR? Okay, um, ADR, for starters, saves you a lot of costs because we have seen many cases in litigation that will go on f over years. Uh, if you're not satisfied at the first court, you may appeal until the Supreme Court. It is a lot of time. And with ADR, everybody is at the same footing. Yeah, because both parties want the same thing. They want to resolve these issues fast. So even with case backlog, with the courts, they will not have to deal with case backlog. And also, 
in ADR, whichever party, be it URA or be it the taxpayer, because we've had cases where taxpayers have actually, where we've vacated like assessments or we've collected only half the tax through ADR. Um, and we all know that money now is better than money tomorrow. So you, you, you cut your, can I say your, your losses or your gains, you, you yeah. gain yes. quickly and you cut your losses quickly, okay. basically. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much, Krista. Um, Tony, I've heard Krista uh, talk about ADR and the benefits that may accrue to URA as a collecting body or the taxpayer. Mm -hmm. But what exactly are these ways that someone can do ADR? What are the forms of ADR? Mm -hmm. well, thank you for that, Tracy. Well, the forms of ADR are, are many, but to wit, it, the first one would be mediation. Now, mediation normally would happen whereby parties go to uh, before a, a neutral party, but that neutral party does not make a decision that is final. The purpose of that party is to guide the parties through the process so that they can be able to reach a settlement of the dispute, and that is known as a mediator. So under the, for tax cases, if a matter is filed in the tax appeals tribunal, uh, now it is a, a requirement following the recent amendments for matters to be mediated. And upon that, when a mediator is appointed, you appear and parties try to settle the dispute that way B without going to the main tax, ap tax appeals tribunal. So that is mediation. Then uh, you may have cases of arbitration. Okay. Now for arbitration, the difference between it and mediation is that the person who is neutral has powers to make a decision that is final, which decision can be binding or non-binding. But for tax purposes, also under the law, if a person is dissatisfied with an objection decision, they can f apply to the commissioner general to, to, to do ADR. And through that, you can have the issues arbitrated. Then for other cases, you can appoint other arbitrators skilled uh, in other matters. Then you may have even negotiation. Negotiation is a form of also ADR. You could reach and you, and you negotiate and you're like, let me pay this amount, for instance, in installments, but I'm going to pay. Or let me pay this amount if it's principal, and we see. So negotiation is whereby there's a win-win and you s resolve the dispute uh, that way. Then, of course, the final that normally ends is that reconciliation is that after you've you've had a dispute, you can decide to just reconcile. It could be an issue whereby you, you decide to just shake hands at the end of the day as a form of resolving your dispute. So those are the, some of the forms oh, of Thank ADR. you so much, Tony. Um, Krista, uh, Tony has spoken about mediation. If I am a taxpayer, I've been given a, uh, issued an assessment by the URA, <clears throat> I've objected. The URA has still maintained its position that you're indeed liable to pay. But I'm interested in mediation. What, how would I initiate the process? Or how would I convince this process? Um, with mediation, mediation usually it is uh, court guided and directed. But um, also other forms of ADR uh, that we, we, we encourage here at URA and negotiation. For the negotiation, you can write to the CG and you, you state your case and you also make your proposals. And then when the CG receives, that is a commissioner general, when they receive your letter, they can set up a meeting to, they can set up a meeting so that you can, you can sit and, and resolve whatever issues that, that you have. Uh, most of these, usually these cases are maybe reconciliation cases, uh, maybe we have not understood your facts very well. But then again also, either party, ADR is not only for the taxpayer to commence, even URA can't commence ADR by writing to the taxpayer. Yes, and uh, with uh, mediation, of course <coughs> you have to first, 
you'll have to first file in, in the tax appeals tribunal because we know that this ADR process does not freeze your rights or obligations because it is your right and or your obligation that if you're not satisfied with an objection decision that you file a matter in the tribunal so that you have your dispute resolved. Okay, I can see a question from somebody. Um, they are asking if they decided to commence mediation mm -hmm. with the Commissioner General after an objection decision has been rendered and they do not file an application in TAT. Would that be safe for them to only pursue the mediation without necessarily having to file an application in time? No, it would not be safe because you, what if the ADR fails? and then the time has been running. Maybe you can write to the Commissioner General and ask them to freeze the time for un until you have concluded your, your, your process, your negotiation or ADR process. But this process does not freeze your rights and obligations. So you can, and they can be pursued parallel. Yes. In parallel. Yes. Yeah. I think, Krista, what you've said is very important. We encounter so many scenarios where the taxpayer decides to only and exclusively pursue ADR, forgetting about the statutory uh, deadlines. So under uh, the laws that we have, the tax laws, you only have 30 days to appeal a decision. So the within the 30 days, you're expected to have filed your application. Otherwise, you'll be out of time. So what Krista says is really important. You file your application, but these proceedings can run concurrently. You can have the mediation as well as the proceedings intact. Also, something that has just come to my mind, what are the timelines for this ADR? For instance, mediation, because it's, it's what I hear you talk about a lot. Are there any timelines? Does it go on for as long as a year, two years? What is usually the practice in terms of length? Tony, could yeah. you? Thank you, Tracy. Uh, well, uh, the mediation, uh, it's, it's also a creature of statute. Uh, there are laws that provide for it, but the days straight to the answer is uh, 60 days. You're supposed to conclude the mediation within 60 days. But also, it's possible that maybe after the 60 days, still parties reach a settlement. Mm -hmm. There and then they can agree that even beyond the 60 days, they can settle the case but timelines are strict because for tax cases the 60 days of mediation are part of the general time frame within which to resolve a tax case because and the reason for creating the tax appeals tribunal was to make sure cases involving revenue are decided expeditiously so for that under the law the tax appeals tribunal is supposed to spend six months on a case but and because of that, you must make sure you finish your mediation within 60, and then they conclude it. Don't take a year. Find a way of making sure you conclude your mediation within the 60 days, or else it will be closed. Because one of the reasons for closing mediation are time frames. Maybe just to add on to what Tony has said, um, even when we close the mediation after 60 days, and and proceedings commence, that uh, does not stop us from continuing to, to maybe negotiate between the parties. So if, if the negotiations yield before the case has ended, well and good. If they do not yield, then the court can decide, but the process, the court process will still be ongoing. And yeah, that's it. Um, Krista, I can see a question for you. Someone is asking about uh, the possible consequences that would arise from a mediation or any other form of ADR in, in relation to tax. Because you said it's a win-win. What do you mean by it's a win-win for both the taxpayer and yes. for your um, Thank you. The possible <coughs> consequences may be um, URA may collect or URA may vacate to the advantage of, of, of the taxpayer or it may be a 50-50 win but even when the ADR fails um, you can proceed with your court with your court uh,
proceedings until the, the end, really. But it's, it's a win-win, that one we have, we all, we all know. And then we also, also during the process of, of mediation or ADR, you, you get to decide, to decide where the axe will fall. Okay, so it is more acceptable by the parties because if you have, if you have uh, participated and you have laid out your facts and your, your facts that you feel should be listened to, the parties are really get to understand each other. And if it, ends, it, if it all ends well, either in a collection or a vacation or whatever, the parties will still have that, that um, relationship, that cordial relationship uh, between each other. Okay, <clears throat> the questions are beginning to pour in, and we encourage you to keep on putting your questions in the chat section. So our somebody is asking, what is the step-by-step -step procedure for a taxpayer to apply for ADR? I think Krista had already mentioned it, but maybe Tony, you can go ahead and highlight uh, briefly the step-by-step -step procedure to apply for ADR. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Tracy. Well, the step-by-step -step procedure to apply for ADR you begin whereby there is a decision you're dissatisfied with, uh, but you write a letter to the commissioner general, and in your letter, you'll be detailing your case and your intention for ADR. So that is the procedure. Then they respond to it with the necessary guidance on as far as the particulars of the procedure forum and the documents are concerned. But it's simple. Just write to the Commissioner General, simply by way of letter, and the, then the rest of the rest will come depending on the response. Because mm -hmm. a matter could be different. Yours could require certain aspects that may not be uh, like they say: uh, one cake does not, not, one size does not fit all. Yeah. yeah. And also, Ed, don't forget that ADR is also informal. That is the beauty of it. You d there's, there's not lots of technicalities. So you cannot be worried that, what if I have not written a, le a letter or an email or what? You may even just come and seek for a meeting and then you're guided. And you will not be caught up by any kind of technicalities with ADR. OK, thank you so much. Uh, the next question is from Anonymous. Anonymous wants to know, is it possible to go straight to ADR without going for objections? I think Anonymous, I will answer you. Uh, by the time you go for an objection, for the, to, by the time you lodge an objection, there is a decision that you, dis you are grieved with, or there is an assessment, and we know that a decision can take any form. It can be seizure, they've seized your goods, or they've impounded them, or they have, URA has rejected to do something that you think that they should have done. So I would, say that actually objections is a form of ADR, although it's not uh, mediation or arbitration as my panelists have said, it is a way of expressing your side of the story. Hey, if I object, I'm objecting to this decision, to this assessment, because of the following. You did not consider my expenses, there were no variances, or whatever it is you think that URA should have considered in probably overturning that uh, decision. Then the URA, will have an opportunity to also state their case. But before they usually make an objection decision, there is an opportunity for the URA to have a conversation with you. It's 45 days, within which to 90 days. 90. 90 days before we lodge, before we render an objection decision. So we have 90 days within which to interact with you, even before you go to TAT, or even before you apply for mediation. So objections is in a way a form of or the ADR, because you state your case, URA gives you an explanation, and then you can have review meetings, which are a form of ADR. I don't know if anyone wants to okay. add on that. No, we shall go to, mm. uh, someone has actually asked that, is objection also ADR, which I, I think is, it is. The objections procedure process is part of ADR. Uh, the next question is from our Karuhanga. With mediation or arbitration, is the taxpayer required to pay 30% as per section 15 of the tax act? And can URA enforce 30%? Krista, can you kindly help us answer that? The first question is, is the taxpayer required to pay 30% if they, if they are undergoing mediation or arbitration? Um, with arbitration, I think 
arbitration is is comes with 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 a contract and it's a clause in the contract i think it depends on what is in the in the contract um with mediation like we have said mediations are usually under the tax appeals tribunal and that means you should have lodged a case with the tax appeals tribunal and by the time you lodge a case at the tax appeals tribunal you should have paid 30 percent actually by the time you object you should have lodged <coughs> you should you should have paid the 30 percent but also with with adr the, the, the good thing with ADR, you may not have the 30%, but within that ADR, you can come and negotiate and say, you know what, I don't have 30%, the whole sum of 30%, but I can pay in installments. That is what you are bringing to the table with, within ADR, and you can be listened to, and we see how to deal with that issue. Well, and then the other issue is, can you reinforce the 30%? I think you've already answered that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Tony, there's a lot of talk and focus on mediation, mediation and arbitration. Yes, yes. But I am sure there's someone out there who needs to really mm -hmm. understand what mm -hmm. is the difference mm -hmm. between mediation, mm -hmm. difference between mediation and arbitration. Mm -hmm. Kindly explain to our viewers. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, uh, let me begin with... Uh, arbitration arbitration is an alternative dispute resolution mechanism whereby instead of going to the court system you choose your own judge or the people who will decide the dispute so it is it is the other side of the coin when it comes to litigation but for you don't the person who decides your dispute is not the judge under the judiciary or if it is a judge under the judiciary they are not operating under the same rooms. So you get someone skilled. It could be an example of, let's say, it's a tax case and it involves transfer pricing. And this is an, if it was to be arbitrated and there are two parties, uh, both parties could choose their own arbitrator who they believe is well conversant in the case. And then the said arbitrators could choose one person amongst them, or depending on what you agree on. But people mostly choose a person to do arbitration, depending on skill in the field, because some skills are really, really specific. Assuming the issue is maybe international tax or a purely accounting, you can choose your own judge who you think will handle the matter that way. Now, for mediation, what happens is mediation, the person deciding the dispute has no powers to bind you. Because in arbitration, you will make your trial, your submissions, and the people will sit and make a decision, and they decide that this person has won, or this one, or this is the result. And the decision is final, and that decision can either bind you, if you agree, or it may not bind you. But for mediation, the person there is just trying to, to convince you to settle. It's just a listener trying, but the, the person cannot forcefully make a decision on their own. Okay. So that is the key difference on who makes the decision. In arbitration, they have powers to decide for you. But for mediation, that neutral party does not have powers to decide for you. Are you aware of any arbitration mm. case that uh, we have handled? Mm. Thank you for that. Actually, when it, the arbitration case we handled uh, is one that made us collect the most revenue I've known so far because uh, it was remember the oil cases when we had issues to do with heritage okay. yeah because of that dispute we are able to there was a contract under the production uh, sharing agreement between Uganda and the oil companies but therein they were saying that if an issue arises concerning either taxes, the matter would be uh, subject to arbitration. So there they we went to London and uh, we arbitrated it and uh, were able to collect uh, taxes. Yeah. Uh, um, viewers do not get worried about the London uh, venue that he has <laughs> talked about. Mm -hmm. It depends on uh, the agreement of both parties. If you decide that you will arbitrate in Uganda, and we have so many institutions that are doing arbitration right now. There is the CIAB, there is ICAMEC, and so ANCADA as well. 
So we have we do carry out arbitrations in Uganda. Don't get worried about the London venue that you spoke about. I'll go to the next question. After the technical technical team, it's kind of hard. After the taxpayer has written to the Commissioner General, within what time is the ADR likely to be conducted and concluded? We have noticed that even after URA receives uh, the letters requesting for ADR, it can take more than four months, which in essence defeats the purpose of the intended ADR. Mm -hmm. Tony, mm -hmm. please. Well, uh, I can repeat the question. Mm -hmm. it's, quite, it's kind of wordy. Mm -hmm. After the taxpayer has written to the Commissioner General, within mm -hmm. what time is ADR likely to be conducted and concluded? Mm -hmm. We can start with the first limb of the mm -hmm. question. Well, I think the general under ADR is it will depend on how the parties quickly resolve. You may find the issue requires exchange of documents or maybe carrying out specific tests or examinations of records or reconciliations and as we all know this can depend on this on the particular case of the matter but ordinarily in stone under the principle of there is no specific and that's the beauty with ADR it is not strict like they will tell you under the the main uh, litigation of that that within 30 days you must lodge your application no for under the current system, you can write a letter and you can agree, depending on the circumstances, on when to conclude it. But of course, the intention is to finish it quickly uh, as possible. I think I can also add to that. Yeah, mm. 60 days is the ideal situation. But the 60 days are sometimes not enough. You'll have a case that is worth billions of shillings or hundreds of millions of shillings. On top of doing investigations, people are saying they did not receive money from a bank. You need to inquire from a bank. There is voluminous documents to review, starting from the taxpayer that needs to retrieve these documents from their archives. That may take a while. To giving the URA team time to review those documents. Then you'll find that some of the facts are jumbled up. When did this happen? Was it in April? Was it in... So there is a lot to consider to reconcile. Besides just the facts, the documents, there is so much, the investigations, sometimes it is likely to spill over 60 days. It is not the intention, of course, of any party to want to drag it over. Everybody wants to conclude, you know, the winner takes it all. If it's a taxpayer and they are right, definitely we'll give it to them and say, you know what, this, you are right. You are justified and we shall vacate the assessment. So that's why you find that sometimes it will spill over the 60 days. And we usually request, if it's arbitration or the mediator, request for more time so that it's extended. Yeah. Thank you for that question, uh, anonym, Anonymous. Uh, just the first meeting takes more than four months. The tribunal can even hear the case and conclude before URA gives your audience in respect of the ADA. <laughs> is that a question or a comment? <laughs> Maybe, uh, Krista, can you kindly counter no. comment? <laughs> if, if that has happened to you, it's, it's very unfortunate. But really, um, at, at URA, our, our aim and our interest is to be at par with our taxpayers. So you should expect a response with not later than, not later than, um, not later than three weeks really, at least a, re a response that, that, that is calling you for a meeting. And then the detail in the meeting is what Tracy has been explaining. But if you were not responded to, we apologize for that, but it's, it's just an unfortunate, isolated incident. Yeah. Thank you, Krista. Uh, we have a question from um, Buyai. He says, good morning, team. What's the legal basis for ADR? That's a very important question. Do we proceed under the Arbitration and Conciliation Act or the Judicature Mediation Rules? Can we answer that or you want to hear the question mm -hmm. as a whole? And do you think that amendment of the TPCA are necessary in order to streamline the ADR process and, for instance, provide for freezing of time between assessment and objection decisions? Does anyone want to take that up, the legal yeah. basis for ADR? Maybe let's break it down. What uh, is the legal basis mm -hmm. for ADR? Mm -hmm. Well, um, 
think, uh, they, they amended the Tax Procedure Code Act in the last financial year and they provided for it. They said that whenever a taxpayer is dissatisfied with a decision of the commissioner, they can apply for a DR. Now that is, the, the, that is the, what I would call the specialist, the specific law for ADR in tax cases. Now you're right that there are other laws that generally provide for arbitration, Arbitration and Conciliation Act. But when it comes to ADR, the, the legal <coughs> provision will be the Tax Procedure Code Act. And then, um, do we proceed under the Arbitration and Conciliation Act or the Judicature Mediation Rules? Like Tony has said, yeah, we do proceed under the Arbitration and Conciliation Act for uh, arbitration matters. When it comes to judicature, yeah, and we also apply the ju Judicature and Mediation Rules because uh, the TAT procedure rules uh, provide for mediation and they make reference <laughs> to those rules. So that is what we use. And do you think, okay, next question. There is no provision for, um, where am I? Do you think, could you kindly go back up? And do you think that amendments of the TPCA are necessary in order to streamline the ADR process and for instance, provide for freezing of time between assessment and objection decisions? Krista, would you like to answer that? Um, I, I do not think so. There's, there's a section in the TPC that's, that refers to the minister uh, making rules and, and yeah. uh, regulations, mm -hmm. which I think would cater for, for that. If, if, if the need arises that they need to freeze the time, uh, I think they would be included in the rules that in the... In the they're called the what? The mediation rule, judicature rule. mediation rule. Yes, the judicature mediation rules that the minister would put into place. Okay, uh, we have. Uh, there is no provision for arbitration in tax matters. Please clarify that this ADR won't be about arbitration, as tax matters are non-arbitrable. Mm -hmm. As per. Can you kindly go down? Um, okay, I'll repeat. This is from MNM. There is no provision for arbitration in tax matters. Please clarify that this ADR won't be about arbitration as tax matters are non-arbitrable as per decision of the High Court in Talo, Uganda, VORA. This is on... <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for that uh, comment. Um, mm. So, thank you, Eminem. This has been uh, taken note, and we shall look further into it. I uh, will ask. Pardon. Okay. Somebody, uh, Eminem, has still gone ahead to say that the oil case was about the PSA specific terms and not the tax terms. Mm -hmm. So the PSA provided for mm -hmm. arbitration in case there was conflict between the government of Uganda and uh, the oil mm -hmm. and between uh, Talo. Um, please keep the questions coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, someone has asked uh, about section 24 of the TPC, mm -hmm. talks of a commissioner but your presentation is emphasizing writing to the Commissioner General. Does this mean that taxpayers who have written to Commissioner domestic taxes will not be listened to and therefore all ADR cases should be addressed to the CG? Mr. Kalunji? Mm. I think, um, I don't know, the, the scenario, I think it's if you have written to a specific commissioner internal I think they can reroute it yes. or they can call you to and the, it's not that rough that because you have written to someone else then it won't but although the proper thing to do we have to admit is to the commissioner general but even if you write to uh, any other SEO commissioner they can reroute it or advise you accordingly like we've, we've been mentioning from the beginning this is informal and although the TPCA talks about commissioner 
which is defined as Commissioner General in the Act, an application to the CDT would still be valid because that is where your claim is. is. It's probably in VAT or income tax, and you feel that the person, best place to handle it will be the CDT. And so that is still okay. Of course, the ideal situation is Commissioner General, but it will still be entertained. This is ADR, and it is not, uh, it's informal, as we had said. Um, do you think the amendment in the TPC is sufficient to cater for this ADR? The section seems to suggest that the minister shall make the regulations to guide ADR. I think we've already talked about that. Yes, Krista. That. Yes, you can take that. No, I think we've already talked about that. Yeah. <coughs> yes. That we shall uh, wait for the minister's mm. rules. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Okay. I think that's what we seem to have so far. Uh, they mentioned that no regulations are out yet, and I think this is why ADR has procedural touch challenges. Uh, remember, we have mentioned that there is also a, a mediation that is guided by TAT. There is also a formal, uh, ed, uh, there is an informal ADR that's carried out at objections. When you're having the objection review processes, those are all mechanisms that you can embrace, that you can use to discuss your cases. You do not necessarily have to stick to only one form. There are so many avenues. You said Commissioner General, TAT, objections. So please be encouraged to use any of the ones that you feel has less procedural challenges for you. Um, the section in the TPC seems to suggest that the taxpayer can go directly to ADR after receipt of an objection decision. Yet according to the existing law, the time for filing the TAT application does not stop running. Isn't there a need for provision that stops the time from running if a taxpayer resorts to ADR? Krista, I know you answered this, but I would really want you to repeat this. Uh, maybe, maybe Tony should take it up. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> getting okay. it across no, Tony. Well. Right. So, Clean Tony, enough. they are concerned mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. the timelines are not being frozen; mm -hmm. they continue to run. Mm -hmm. And yet, we are saying you can, you know, you can go to ADR. Mm -hmm. So, should the person go directly to ADR when the mm -hmm. timelines are running? What mm -hmm. do you advise that person to do? Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, the provision currently prov gives you the option. There are two roads to take. You can choose to go to ADR or go to the tax appeals tribunal. About the need to freeze, it would mean that if at all that provision is there, it would mean that if time is frozen, you intend to go to ADR, and then if you're not successful, then go to TAT. Now, the intention of ADR was really to quickly resolve disputes. But if it becomes a separate ladder, eh? it's a, it becomes a separate tier, then it would actually increase the resolution of disputes. It would mean that after the objection decision, you go to ADR, and when you're dissatisfied, you go to TAT. It would defeat one of the intentions of it's ADR. It's backlogging the way. It's backlogging, so it's a choice that you have to, to make carefully. But still, let's await for the guidelines from the Minister of Regulations to properly uh, know which way to take. But my view would be, you choose, you go to ADR, you quickly resolve it. But if you want to go to ADR with an intention that you will again go to TAT, then you can choose to go to the Tax Appeals Tribunal, and under the Tax Appeals Tribunal, go for mediation. And that's my... Okay, thank you so much, Tony. Uh, we can have the next question. Uh... <laughs> Still about the same, we have answered this. Is it possible that after objections, and I can write to the Commissioner General for negotiation before going to TAT? Please be mindful, you have that timeline of 30 days. So much as yes, you can explore ADR with a CG, you have the 30 days running which are not frozen. So you can explore those concurrently. But it's likely that the ADR will conclude your case even before TAT can maybe schedule your case and proceed with the hearing. Um, given the busy schedule in the calendar and diary of the Commissioner General, wouldn't it be ideal for the ADR committee to sit without the CG in order to achieve expedience? Does the law require the CG to be in the meeting? 
as we have said, we are there are laws that are in the offing um, um, under the TPC regulations that are going to provide more clarity on what ADR is going to be. No, it's not compulsory for the Commissioner General to be present. That's true. But we shall be able to discuss this in detail when these regulations are out and when a policy has come out as a result of that, uh, those regulations. For, so for now, I don't know if Christa, you want to say something. No, no I, I actually agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. um, but when we mention the Commissioner General, of course you have to address your letter to somebody. It doesn't mean that the Commissioner General should always come and mm -hmm. sit in the sit in the ADR and everything. But you need to address your letter requesting to somebody. That is basically why we kept mentioning that. Thank you for that. And then also, the Commissioner General, just like you stated, he could be busy, but he has power, he or she has powers to delegate sure. some powers, including it. So I think you just <coughs> write the letter. The, the delegation could happen, they could appoint another person. You can appoint you. Yes. <laughs> you could sit Tony on the committee. <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> yeah, so it would be mm. nice to have a familiar face. Mm. I think that is all, but we are we encourage you to continue engaging us mm. because ADR is a very hot topic. We are settling hundreds of cases. We mm. wouldn't want your case to be left out for you to miss this opportunity to settle with us. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, someone is saying that I humbly suggest that ADR should be added to the portal so that we can use it easily in soft copy, simple tick of a box, upload my facts later, and submit where a case reference number is even generated for easy follow-up, like how we, are, we have been filing returns. Thank you so much, Anonymous. This, has, this is a very good contribution. We'll definitely take it into consideration. Um, uh, m and m okay yeah and m and m is 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 stuff thank you very much she is clarifying that uh the application for ADR must be made to the c g he then has powers to delegate the c d t and team to handle the ADR he needs not be present thank you m and m thank you Mwaju, uh for your insightful comments. So as we wait for these regulations, why is it that URA always says the ADR meeting is waiting for the Commissioner General to fix a date in his diary? What is the point of this ADR at this time, Tony? Well, um, uh, thanks for feedback. You can have the question. Mm -hmm. It's this last one. Well, the point for ADR is to settle the, the dispute. And if you write, we, 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 are, we acknowledge that sometimes the response may not be imminent as you expect it to be, but later on, they finally give you a time frame on uh, how to come and resolve the dispute. This is similar to other mainstream ways of resolving disputes, because even if you file in the tax appeals tribunal, fine, they are supposed to adjudicate the matter expeditiously, but it's not like you file today, and then they hear your matter today, and in the afternoon they decide no. Now for them, they even give time, like 30 days for you are to respond, and then uh, it comes up, you schedule. There are processes, so it may not end in a day. So similarly, when it comes to CG, you write, the response comes through. It may not come that very day, but it has to come through, because uh, you are is more interested in ADR. It's more interested in it, and as statistics show, we have resolved more disputes uh, by way of ADR. So a response has to come through. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, you can continue. Um, m, &M. m, &M. m, &M. m Mwaju, thank you again. Uh, ADR mm -hmm. will be done within 30 days and not 60 days. Uh, this will be taking into consideration the time needed for one to go to that. Okay. Mm. So that's her comment. Thank you so much, Mwajo. Mm. We continue to wait for your questions. This is a live Q&A session where we are, we want to address all your concerns about our ADR. 
um, someone is asking who has power to bind URA in reference to execution of consent judgments and ADR decisions? Is there implied delegation of powers from the CG or there has to be written authority? Okay, Mbuya, you're asking about uh, how the delegation occurs in URA. Really, uh, <laughs> what can I say? When it comes to consent judgments, we have a, 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 dip, uh, a department called the Legal Services and Board Affairs Department mm -hmm. that has a commissioner legal and assistant, two assistant commissioners. So the assistant commissioner litigation and the commissioner legal are, are, have the powers to sign and execute these consent judgments. So, yeah. Keep the questions coming in. I would want to know um, what kind of cases can be um, subject to ADR. Is there a particular type, or really any anything can be resolved like that? I think generally, the general bit would be without listing going into VAT. We could say maybe, unless the case really has. And this is an example like elements of gross fraud or tax avoidance, but other than the other cases should be subject to ADR. Maybe also cases, to add on to what Tonya said, cases that are points of law, I, I, I don't think those can be subjected to ADR because we need the courts to pronounce themselves on how we need to, to use, apply those laws in, in tax administration. Okay, thank you so much, colleagues. I don't seem to see any other questions. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What is URA doing to ease the process mm -hmm. for us, the small boys? There is nobody small. <laughs> <laughs> Every taxpayer is valued. Every person is valued. Us ourselves, we're actually taxpayers as well. So there's nothing like small boys, big boys. The rules apply to everybody uniformly. They follow the same procedures. And that is it. So there's no special treatment given to anybody. Thank you. So I think we are coming towards the end of uh, this session. Unless there's any question we've left unanswered. Okay, I will take this opportunity to ask uh, Krista to give us her closing remarks on this. A word to everybody who's listening. Okay, thank you, Tracy. Uh, my closing remarks would be, remarks would be that we should all embrace ADR. Um, do not be afraid to approach URA, because when you sit at the ADR table, we all sit as equals, um, because we are all looking to, to, to re resolve this matter in the shortest time possible and at the lowest cost possible. Yes, my encouragement is embrace ADR, and we develop Uganda together. Krista? Mm -hmm. so yes, Tony. Thank you, Tracy. I think uh, also to add my voice to what Krista has said, ADR has enormous benefits, the flexibility. Think about you not having to rush to a court in a specific room at a specific time whereby you can have it in a boardroom, you can present your evidence the way you want, you, you're given audience, but now if you go to court, they might limit you to speak through only your legal representative. Then the time that will be saved, because you'll be want, working with the diary of the commissioner and yourself and not other specific parties. So the benefits are enormous. And then you can win, it can save you from legalities <coughs> that may not touch you onto the merits of the case. You may find your case is good, and in reality, you would benefit, but if you go for mainstream litigation, you may find a lawyer and they raise an issue 
that does not even concern your case, but it will affect you. They will say your application is out of time, that your evidence is here, say, hmm? that, uh, for instance, you're citing uh, things that are not applicable. They may even cross-examine you and they ask questions beyond the case. They may say you've missed a hearing and they close. Hmm? They may even do other things that affect your case. But with ADR, it sticks to the merits. It is more informal, and because of that, you're able to benefit. So this is for ADR. Try as much as possible, if you have the opportunity, to go for ADR, because the benefits are enormous. Thank you, Tony. Uh, thank you so much, viewers, for tuning in. It has been such a lively and engaging session with you, especially in the chats. Continue to keep the questions coming in on our social media pages, on Facebook and Twitter. We shall be glad to respond to them even after this session has closed on Zoom. We encourage you to embrace uh, ADR. It is the future, really. Going through the court system is getting out of fashion. If you can settle your uh, matters out of court, that would be the best. And I leave you with these wise words from uh, Abraham Lincoln, who is a champion in ADR. He said, uh, as much as possible, discourage litigation persuade your neighbors to compromise whenever they can. And so from us and the panelists, we wish you a blessed uh, Easter weekend and enjoy yourself. Stay safe. In chairs, the small one can become the big one. It's the same here. And here too. Watch every move. Record every number so you can plan better. No matter the size of your dream, tomorrow's success belongs to those who keep today's records clean. File your returns today. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Kapo, you seem to be in a hurry. Where are you going to? I'm going to pay you a visit. Why would anyone visit URA? Of all places? To know more about the Kakasa Business Solutions, namely digital tracking solution, the voluntary disclosure program and electronic fiscal receipting, and invoicing solution, which have turned my business around. You know I need to be on top of my game to protect my empire. <laughs> yeah, if you know, you know. I too need to know what Kapo knows. Kakasa, be sure you are in charge of your business. Uganda Revenue Authority, developing Uganda together. Wait, Abu, Tuna Mariliza. And what are you doing throwing papers all over the place? I'm looking for an invoice for a sound system and cables that I received yesterday, but I can't find it. You know there is a way of keeping all this in one place and available to you as and when you need it. I really wish there was one, because the way these invoices grow legs and disappear, I believe this is what you're looking for. Eh, eh? Now how did it get there? Tabo! Do you know that with Efris, you can stay on track of all your business transactions and improve on your record keeping? How so? Katituliku computer with Efris. I just search using the fiscal document number and I retrieve the records I'm looking for. Bookkeeping becomes simple after that. Ah. Kapo, also me. I began using URS Kakasa solutions and now I'm in charge of my business. And you can as well. Kakasa, be sure. You are in charge of your business. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together.